um, daily, and eventually the daily are collapsed into monthly ones. As I point out on this slide, timely, statistically efficient updates of forecasts are essential for a vast array of disciplines involving public policy planners, financial executives, even gamblers, and the list goes on and on. And that is why this research topic is uh, rather popular. Uh, the focus of our study is to assess the relative predictive accuracy of alternative mixed frequency forecasting methods within the context of uh, forecasting Philippine inflation, GDP growth, and other related macroeconomic variables. By now, all the methods that uh, we consider are commonly used in current econometric forecasting environments, but new variations keep sprouting as new needs, new data types uh, emerge. Also, there are some local research activities in the Philippines that deal with this topic as well. And in particular, uh, I know Dennis Mapa has been working on uh, mixed frequency VAR or vector autoregressive uh, processes applied to Philippine uh, now casting. The paper focuses on variations of mixed frequency dynamic latent factor models or DFM for short and described quickly uh, on the left side of the slide. And on the right side, MIDAS, an acronym for Mixed Data Sampling Regressions. For now, suppose we have only monthly and quarterly data in our sample, and in your mind, stack each variable data into a column of monthly observations so that quarterly variables like GDP and PGDP have missing observations in their columns. The first two months of each quarter is a blank. If all data are available, estimation and simulation of the two models have already been around for a long while. Kalman filtering in, in the state space formulation in the case of uh, DFMs. Uh, but complications arise when, as in our case, some observations are periodically missing. Uh, DFM and MIDAS deal with this problem of missing observations in the mixed uh, frequency data set in two different fashions, as we will see in the succeeding slides. In the dynamic latent factor model, the underlying philosophy is that macroeconomic fluctuations are driven by a small number of unobserved common shocks or factors and an idiosyncratic component peculiar to each economic time series, dependent on observed exogenous variables, uh, W in the equation, in the measurement equation, um, and unobserved specific errors, epsilon t. Capital F represents the unobserved common shocks in these measurement equations. The second group of equations that make up the basic state space model explains the behavior of the observed, unobserved common factors. The state equations would require an additional term in the specification, as we see on the slide, if we allow possible interactions with other observable indicators, which would require a second term involving W or some other exogenous variables in the state equations. As specified, the basic model cannot be used directly for estimation purposes because of the missing observations in capital Y and possibly W, the exogenous variables, namely those that are quarterly, given that this is a monthly model. This is addressed by deriving an expanded operational state space model in monthly terms without any blanks at the measurement equations. Another alternative variation for the dynamic factor model arises when there's a large number of indicator variables. Uh, later on in, in, in our summary tables, we call this dynamic factor large 
just uh, just to distinguish it from the basic uh, uh, dynamic factor model. And the main idea behind it is to reduce the dimension of the indicator variables through factor analysis, then deal with the dynamics in the behavior of the latent factors, that's in the second equation for a capital F, uh, which by then will be observable, and finally model the impact of the factors on the target variables, that's the third equation, set of equations for capital Y. Midas, if you uh, take a look at the model equations on the other hand, takes on a completely different uh, approach and estimates a uh, reduced, what econometricians would call a reduced form uh, model, a monthly regression of each target variable on monthly and possibly quarterly indicators using parsimonious distributed lags to represent missing observations. So very briefly, uh, a stylistic way of uh, describing this would be to write it uh, as in the slide uh, where the contemporaneous uh, observation on Y on the target variable depends on contemporaneous values of W, the exogenous explanatory variables, as well as lag values. Uh, in order to economize on the parameters and have a parsimonious uh, uh, parametrization, restrictions in form and values are imposed. And these are various distributed lag structures that have been used. Unrestricted step function, so-called Almond polynomial lags, exponential Almond, as well as beta distribution. There are also other variations in uh, MIDAS uh, to take care of additional parts. For example, if you look at this specification here in the model equation, there is no variation in lag, there is no value, lag values of Y showing up. And so uh, one, one way of doing that is through MIDAS var, where you essentially introduce lag values of Y as well. In case of factor Midas, the idea is to utilize factors before doing the Midas regression. In uh, principal components, as the term uh, denotes, the initial list of indicators is collapsed into uh, principal uh, components utilizing stepwise regression as a selection process for determining, uh, for choosing the principal components. And in our particular case, both contemporaneous as well as uh, uh, lagged uh, principal components are, util are, are, are introduced and taken into account in the selection process. Autoregressive distributed lags, uh, uh, here, the dependent and explanatory variables are related, not only at the current period, but at cross lag values up to a certain order. In our case, we restricted that to one for the dependent variables and to 12 uh, for X. We also, in addition to all these different variations of MIDAS and DFM, we also consider combination of forecasts as a way of uh, achieving or improving forecast accuracy. And the different uh, schemes that, uh, weighting schemes to do forecast averaging that we considered are listed here. There are five of them. One is to use the mean of the forecasts coming, out, coming from the different methods uh, as uh, the uh, combined forecast. A second one is median. And the second, in terms, of, uh, in terms of the weights, use the mean square errors for each of the uh, forecasting procedures. And then uh, the ranks based on the mean square error. And last, uh, and that this will turn out to be the best one among the five, uh, is uh, to use weights coming from least squares regression of uh, actual observations for each of the target variables on forecasts at uh, time t. Uh, 
So uh, what did we do to, uh, what, what was the uh, approach that we used for our methodology? First, we estimate the forecasting methods in the comparison pool that we would be analyzing and calculate forecast errors over the sample period. The sample period in our case is 1999 to 2019. Uh, results are discussed, that are discussed here all pertain to one period ahead for forecasts. And we first compare forecast perf uh, performance measures. In our case, we rely mostly on mean absolute error. No need to take percentages because of the fact that all our target variables are expressed in terms of uh, growth rates. Then we apply statistical tests of comparative predictive accuracy, the Diebold Mariano test, of course, and uh, the, uh, an extension of the uh, Diebold Mariano test, the Mariano Prevail test. The Diebold Mariano test compares two forecasting methods and tests for the equality of forecast accuracy of two forecasting methods, mano a mano. And it's based on the sample mean of observed loss differentials. But in our case, we you use the squared error loss, but the procedure itself uh, is uh, very flexible and can be used for other specifications instead of squared error loss. And it is analogous to the classical test for equality of two means, except that in this case, we have to deal with heteroscedasticity and uh, autocorrelation in the observations that are being used. The Mariano Preve test compares more than two forecasting methods. And as you would expect, it will be based it would be an analog of the classical multivariate test for the equality of K means. In the next slide, we talk about another type of tests that we utilize, and this is the test for forecast encompassing. And here, given a set of uh, uh, forecasts, forecasting methods, we want to test the null hypothesis that a particular method, say call, call it forecast J, contains all the information in the other forecasts. And this is what the forecast encompassing test does. And the test is based on a regression of forecast errors of the particular method of the other forecast in the pool. And the null hypothesis is accepted if all slope coefficients in these regressions uh, are insignificant. Uh, to implement all these uh, procedures, the estimation, uh, the calculation of uh, uh, error measures, accuracy measures, and the uh, application of the tests, the econometric statistical package used was uh, EViews 11, the 2019 version, and uh, a recent uh, R package for calculating the Mariano Preve test uh, uh, for the multivariate uh, test. Before going to the main findings, let me just briefly uh, point out that the database includes uh, daily, monthly, quarterly data over the period 1999, uh, month one, uh, to 2019, uh, month uh, 12. Uh, the target variables that are forecasted all in terms of year-on-year -year growth rates are uh, real GDP and the GDP implicit price deflator. I just call it PGDP in, in my discussion. And these, are, uh, these two are available on a quarterly uh, basis. And monthly data available for the other four targets, uh, the consumer price index CPI, which is the basis for our measure for inflation, and then the industrial production index, merchandise exports, and producer price index. Uh, real GDP, industrial production, and merchandise export, exports are obviously real sector variables, while the other remaining three, the CPI, the PGDP, and the PPI, are all price variables. 
the indicator variables that we utilize, the Ws, W variables in my earlier notation, are nearly 60 indicator variables, both coming from Philippine data as well as external uh, data. And here are the uh, seven uh, blocks that you can categorize them. The external prices in particular uh, deal with, sorry, uh, are, are prices uh, in the world, in the US, as well as the Dubai oil import price and other external data that are uh, relevant to Philippine growth and inflation are the OECD leading indicators, uncertainty index, and the world trade uh, volume. Uh, we also utilize, note that we also utilize expectation survey data uh, that come from the Banco Central ng uh, Pilipinas. The two main data sources that we use for the Philippines are the uh, PSA, the Philippine Statistics Authority, and the Central Bank of the Philippines. And uh, for the external sources, the Federal Reserve Board FRED database of uh, uh, the Federal Bank of St. Louis and the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and IMF and uh, OECD. There are quite a few findings, uh, but in the interest of time, I'll just focus on two main findings. One is on the, on the results of the methods, uh, on, on, on uh, the encompassing tests that determine whether there are forecasting methods that will encompass all the rest of all those that we are comparing. And it turns out that uh, factor MIDAS encompasses the others, the other 10 or so uh, different procedures that uh, we compared uh, for GDP and the GDP deflator, the two quarterly data, target variables. None encompasses the others in the case of industrial production and merchandise imports. Uh, while for uh, CPI, it is the uh, DFM and DFM large that would encompass the rest and for PPI, the stepwise and bridge. And when we look at this uh, chart, a little bit confusing, but uh, the different lines uh, pertain to each individual forecasting method connecting the MAE, the mean absolute error values for each of the six target variables. The, all the lines apart from the big blue line, uh, let me see, let me just say that for the uh, purple one, the purple line, connected lines pertain to factor Midas and the big red pertain to the dynamic factor model. And the big blue line is another special one, but uh, does not belong to this individual group, but is a combined and the least, based on least squares uh, weights. So what we see is that there's a lot of crisscrossing lines for the individual forecasts, showing that there is no clear winner. What, uh, what we're plotting here are mean absolute errors. And so the lower the values, the better. What ideally what you would like to see is one individual procedure dominating everybody else by being uniformly lower, but none is. It just goes to show you that there is no clear winner among the individual ones and leads to the likelihood of being able to attain some improvement and in some cases vast improvement in forecast accuracy by doing a combination. And it turns out that when we compare the five uh, different schemes for uh, forecast averaging that we mentioned earlier, the use of least square weights turns out to be the best. Uh, and it showed lowest MAE for five of the six target variables and second lowest MAE. And that is uh, this uh, blue line here. So what we conclude from the, just these comparisons and these calculations is that there's no clear winner and just about every method considered performs better 
in some cases and worse in other cases. And so one uh, likely uh, way to proceed is to combine the forecast and in, so in that uh, process, utilize the least square weights because they perform better than the others. As always, uh, in doing empirical uh, comparisons on projects like this, you always end up with a lot of questions. Uh, uh, and there's no end uh, to it. And let me just quickly uh, go through this list and uh, just point out some of the questions that arise as, uh, as uh, I try to uh, get, uh, get some uh, clarity in, in uh, looking at the comparative merits of these alternative procedures. We should take a closer look at the magnitudes of the forecast errors and ask ourselves, will this be good enough for real life of situations like for an inflation targeting program, which indicators are useful? Are the, uh, are the magnitudes uh, big enough to, to give you a reasonable range uh, for in, uh, to set your inflation targets? There's also the question of multi-period forecasting horizons. There are further enhancements in forecasting model specification, time dynamics, including additional explanatory variables using self-rated poverty happiness indexes like as in SWS, they could prove very useful as we seem to find in some, some uh, recent projects. And how about other big data? Using daily data more directly in now casting is also important. And to explore the potential to quantify impact of big sudden shocks in the system like what we're now facing in COVID. With all these uh, uh, questions and issues, uh, let me end here and uh, leave some room for questions later on. Thank you very much, Arniel. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh